<clears throat> Theoretical physicist and Nobel Prize winner Richard Feynman stated, it is of great value to realize that we do not know the answers to different questions. This attitude of mind, this attitude of uncertainty is vital to the scientist, and it is this attitude of mind which the student must first acquire. Certainly one particular eighth grader embodies the qualities of intellect that Feynman appreciated. Feynman was involved in some of the most groundbreaking thinking of the 20th century, yet he was also opposed to traditional rote learning, and instead he believed that the best students developed their own questions and sought their own answers. Doing so requires sharp reasoning coupled with bravery. Since such a scholar needs to be comfortable challenging the norm and stretching the limitations of a particular assignment or a given assumption. As a new teacher to Emerald last spring and new to teaching middle school, one student in particular helped me to find my bearings in the EMS classroom. She asked questions that drove our discussions, sometimes as clever reactions within a lively brainstorm, though often after several minutes of quiet contemplation, during which she sifted through an array of ideas found her own specific point of interest, and then delivered incisive inquiry that would cause her classmates to pause in their considerations and set the topic back into clear focus. She has an exceptional mind, and she complements her stark intellect and honest and empathic consideration for the viewpoints of others. Last spring, therefore, I increasingly designed my lessons with her in mind, knowing that if I asked the sorts of questions that would spur her curiosity, she, in turn, would inspire her peers with questions of her own, questions that sought deep meaning. This year, I've been all the more impressed to see her quiet confidence develop further and her sense of humor emerge, as she has cultivated her relationships with her peers while sustaining academic excellence. In fact, some of her best thinking this year came from what she knew immediately and better than anyone else, including me. Renowned thinker and author Malcolm Gladwell states, Truly successful decision-making relies on a balance between deliberate and instinctive thinking. While her various academic achievements reveal her outstanding deliberate thinking, which is informed by her careful attention to analysis, she likewise proved herself adept at instinctive thinking, relying on her intuition to manage her own stress levels. For a few days in early March, I was flummoxed when she opted not to try out for a speaking part in Tempest. My reaction came from my deliberate concern. It seemed out of character. I figured something was wrong, that perhaps she was, for once, losing interest. In part, at least, my concern really was for myself, since I simply wanted to see her on stage. As it turned out, however, and even before her injury a few days later, instinctively she knew what, she already, what was already overbooked, that she was already overbooked, rather, that her extracurriculars were too important to add further burden, and that she wouldn't be able to offer the time needed to learn the part up to the quality of her own high standards. Her decision did not come from a place of fear, nor of analysis, nor did she bend to my provocation. She decided from her gut. She was confident in her choice, and she was correct. While she remained steadfast in completing outstanding work, she calmly and instinctively looked out for her own health, her own perspective, her own integrity. Carrie recently stated the following. I would like to offer a quote about her that is not in my own words, but by a figure from history with whom I see her having many similarities. Simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. Leonardo da Vinci. Carrie added, I think da Vinci's quote reflects her artistic style, creativity, and overall views on life. Our world is so complicated and busy. It needs more of the wonderful calm of people like her. In Harkening Carey's perspective, I realized that this spring, and for reasons different than, but no less important than those a year ago, this eighth grader again helped me to find my bearings. She reminded me that amid the intensity of intellectual pursuit and academic rigor, sometimes it's best to ease up on the accelerator for a few minutes and appreciate the view. I know that she'll continue to excel throughout her academic life, and that she'll feed her insatiable curiosity beyond the classroom. But I also take solace in knowing that she'll do so with a calm understanding of her own needs, a confidence in her own perspective, and the bravery to seek out new answers while quietly enjoying the process of her own discoveries. She has been inspirational for me, and I wish her all the success ahead. Credit Presenting to
diplomas. Whoa, we good. We good up there. <laughs> Presenting diplomas this morning will be Jeremy Bailing, the chair of our board of trustees. Um, before I begin calling graduates names, I just want parents to know, um, please feel free to come on up here, come on up here and take a photo um, of your child. We also have this um, on film, but please feel free to come on up here and take a photo. We'll start with Bridger A. Carlton. Reese Fowler. <laughs> Josephina Lee Hermosinski. <laughs> Salvador Blake Malone. Avery Blair Moyer. <laughs> Greta Elizabeth Schmitz. thank everyone for, who came here today to help us celebrate this rite of passage for our graduates. I now present the graduating class of 2019. Stand on up. into the fellowship hall and then I invite you to join us for a, oh, is there a, is there something going on? I really want to say a huge thank you to Samantha and Debbie Mary for everything they've done for this school. It really means a lot to us. Um, it's flowers are for you and thank you about that. So thank you for everything you've done for us. And that bottle of wine over there is for when you don't want to. <laughs> 